Yeah, I think for now, I still see SK Hynix for both HBN3, 12 high, which is the most common HBN right now in AI chips, uh, as well as upcoming HBN4. I think SK Hynix technological leadership and market leadership will continue. That's why I'm seeing. Well, there's a risk that, well, the increasing competition from Micron and Samsung could come into play. But we, I think at least for the second half of 2025, SK Hynix will continue its leadership. And given what I've been seeing, I think HBM4 will still be led by SK Hynix. Okay, so having established that, let's break it down a little bit in terms of what exactly high bandwidth memory chips are. Basically, it's a memory chips that have um, high bandwidth because of the way they are stacked, so they have higher speed, uh, more power efficient, and so on. But the story is really NVIDIA, isn't it? How SK Hynix has decided to really tailor their products to NVIDIA's GPUs. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, Amelia itself it's accounts for seventy percent of global HBN consumptions based on the data we have been seeing here in Futurian, right? And apparently, that really benefit SK Hynix, who is the the biggest suppliers for Amelia uh, across its product line, right? So, if you look at Amelia stock price and its revenue have been growing over the past two and a half year, you kind of can assume that there will be significant revenue also being translated into SK Hynix revenue over the past two years. And that's part of the reason that SK Hynix stock continue to grow over the past, you know, past few quarters, right? And its technology leadership is also outpaced companies like Samsung and Micron in both um, ranging from earlier HBN3 to right now the HBN3 E12 high we are seeing right now in most of the uh, media split wheel AI hardware. Mm, and talk to me about why Samsung is struggling to get that NVIDIA deal. And you can get really technical, uh, you know, the front end technology that you talked about in your research report. But what was it, um, at, perhaps at the company's culture or uh, engineering technology? Which one was it? Yeah, I, I, I still see, well, I will say like, well, po probably management or like organizational struggle could could play a role here, but I think essentially it goes to the kind of front end manufacturing technology, right? That has been kind of the, the, the things we call the DRAM nut, which is the under nine uh, nanometers nut for DRAM, that that's the part that Samsung really struggle with, in, especially in terms of the yield, right? And you know, for SK Hynix, mm -hmm. that has been able to produce their HBN with the DRAM nuts uh, very constantly and with stable yield. And that's really how SK Hynix to continue to pass the qualification. But Samsung, on the other hand, they couldn't really pass the qualification. And that's a, that has been a thing, right? And, you know, the delay is not happening just once, right? It's happening, I think, in total, mm. I think, three times until now. And what I've been hearing right now, probably the delay will, the re-qualification will, it's been delayed until late, uh, third quarter or fourth quarter this year. Mm. I want to challenge the viability of HBM story altogether. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when uh, before H20 chips were allowed back into uh, China, although we don't really have the paperwork at the moment, um, there was a report suggesting, I think it was uh, FT that was reporting, that NVIDIA was uh, trying to design this uh, chip less advanced, uh, but uh, that would that they will be able to export to China, and that model would do without um, HBM chips. Number one, is that a possibility, do you think? And number two, maybe um, when cost comes down, when AI costs come down altogether, another deep seek moment, maybe HBMs are not really needed anymore. Yeah, I think well, to answer the question number one, I think what the chip you are talking about is sort of RTX series from NVIDIA, 
and that chips is usually don't with you know don't equate with HBN. It's with it, uh, equate with a thing we call GDDR7, which uh, to my understanding, mm. I think Nvidia's China offering will be have the GDDR7 that's supplied by Samsung instead of SK Hynix, right? So in this case, this Chinese offerings is actually helping Samsung instead of SK Hynix. You know, to your second question, which I think some some people have concern, especially back into January or February when the DC R1 coming out. But I think so far, given the AI inference, the rise of reasoning models, we are seeing this significant need for AI inference is actually underscored the importance of HBN, which helping the broad, like overall AI chips to address more complex AI, uh, AI workload, right? So I think for now, I still see HBM as a key bottleneck for both AI, uh, mm. AI model developments and AI hardware development moving forward.